Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov tensed for the jerk of the landing module detaching from the rest of the ship. Instead, the module began to spin wildly, reaching up to 10 Gs. With horror, he realized a cable still connected them to the orbital module. Would this be how his story ended? What would it mean for the space race and the Cold War? In the aftermath of World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union entered into a quiet conflict with each other known as the Cold War. The tensions of this unconventional war came from the United States' mostly unjustified fear of communism spreading their way and the Soviet Union's somewhat more justified anger at the states not recognizing them as a part of the global community. There was also some understandable resentment from the Soviet Union that the states didn't join World War II sooner as it could have saved millions of lives in their country. From this conflict, the space race was born. Both countries saw the venture into space as a way to prove themselves as the world's number one superpower. While this race was based on fear and grudges, it catapulted humanity into space faster than would have happened otherwise. We went from announcing our intention to reach space to walking on the moon in only 14 years. Before the moon landing, there was the first spacewalk, but that story doesn't end with the completion of Alexei Leonov's jaunt into space. It only begins there. Alexei Leonov was born on May 30, 1934 in Siberia. Like many at the time, he didn't have a great childhood. His father was falsely imprisoned as an enemy of the people, which left Leonov's mother with nine children to care for. While his father would eventually return home and be compensated, it still led to a hard time as Leonov's mother and the children moved in with her oldest daughter. Money was tight and Leonov, a budding artist, sold his paintings to help with the family's finances. When lack of funds made pursuing a degree in the arts unattainable, Leonov instead joined a Ukrainian flight school and continued on to an advanced two-year course at the Chugwev Higher Air Force Pilot School in the Ukrainian SSR. He had dreams of becoming a fighter pilot. After three years of service, he was one of 20 Soviet Air Force pilots chosen for cosmonaut training in 1960. Just five years later, he would become the first man to chill in space. The Soviet Union got in a lot of firsts during those early years. First satellite launched, first space probe to hit the moon, first human in space. You know, just little things that really got under America's skin. It was these accomplishments that led to the founding of NASA. Through all this, the Soviet Union had another first in mind, the first spacewalk. Alexei Leonov was the man set to make it happen. In fact, he had been scheduled to do the walk on the first Voskhod mission, but it was canceled. With Pavel Belyayev as the pilot and Leonov as the co-pilot, the Voskhod 2 launched on March 18, 1965. The two cosmonauts were some of the few that knew what was planned. This would be the last mission of the Voskhod program. When the time came, Belyayev helped Leonov put on the modified spacesuit that would allow him to survive in open space. He also wore a special EVA, or Extra Vehicular Activity backpack, equipped with the oxygen he would need to breathe and keep cool. They deployed the inflatable airlock and pressurized it from inside the craft before Leonov entered it. When it was sealed behind him, Leonov depressurized the airlock and opened the hatch. Secured to the ship by a 4.8 meter or 16 foot tether, he did what no one before him had and floated into open space. He later wrote that while he looked down at the earth, he felt, quote, like a seagull with its wings outstretched, soaring high above the earth. 10 minutes later, he began to use the tether to pull himself toward the ship. It was only then that he realized his spacesuit had ballooned and grown stiff due to the vacuum of space, making it too big to fit back in the airlock. Luckily, Leonov had spent 18 months training for this mission and had thought of what he would do in such a situation. Without communicating with mission control, he made the dangerous choice to begin slowly letting oxygen out of the suit so it could decompress back to a size that would allow him to re-enter the ship. This move may have saved his life, but it also put him at risk of running out of oxygen, getting the bends, or succumbing to heat stroke. With effort, he was able to fit through the airlock and maneuver himself to close it behind him. That allowed Belyayev to equalize the pressure. Finally, Leonov made it back in the ship. Down on Earth, the live feed of the spacewalk had been cut off when things started to go wrong. This spared Leonov's family, including his four-year-old daughter, the fear and anxiety of watching him try to re-enter his ship, but also left them with no idea how wrong the mission was about to go. 
There was a short period of relief for Leonov after reaching the safety of the ship, but it didn't last long. As they prepared for re-entry, they realized the automatic guidance system was malfunctioning. That meant they were going to have to land the craft manually, planning where they wanted to land and figuring out the duration and timing of the retro rockets firing. As they approached their final orbit, they began to descend, realizing they were going to come down very far off course. They aimed for a patch of land outside Perm, west of the Ural Mountains. Belyaev fired up the engines and they waited, silently counting down the 10 seconds it took for their landing module to detach, but it didn't. Instead, a cable connected the landing module to the orbital module and the two vessels were spinning wildly. The pressure and force of it caused blood vessels to burst in their eyes. At 100 kilometers or 62 miles above ground, the cable burnt through and snapped. The landing chutes deployed, slowing the ship's descent until they finally touched down. The ship's navigation system showed they had landed past Perm, about 386 kilometers or 240 miles from their intended landing site. They eagerly opened the ship's hatch to find themselves in a thickly wooded area. Deep snow had helped cushion their landing. Though they were happy to be back on solid ground, they knew they weren't out of danger yet. Eager to set foot on solid ground, Leonov and Belyaev activated the explosive bolts that held the landing hatch closed. The hatch jerked open, but only barely as it was caught against a tree. They rocked the hatch back and forth until the bolts came loose and they could shove it aside to take a breath of fresh, grade A earth air. Relieving as it was, the sights around them were less comforting. The woods were dense and dark, and the snow was up to their neck in places. Not only were the woods home to bears and wolves, but it was also mating season, which would have the animals more aggressive. Luckily, both men had grown up in the north and were experienced with bitter cold and other dangers. The ship was equipped with a gun and a knife, and they armed themselves before leaving the ship. They fought their way through the snow, hoping their rescue signal had been received at headquarters in Moscow. Turns out, it hadn't been. Still, Mission Control reported to their families that they were safe and well, resting before they returned. Luckily, the signal had been received by other listening posts as well as a cargo plane that had been passing overhead. It took four hours for word to reach Moscow and a rescue team to arrive at their location. As excited as they must have been to see the helicopter overhead, they soon realized that in their bulky spacesuits, there was no way they would be able to climb the rope ladder the team sent down. The woods were too dense where they were to allow the helicopter to land. The team threw clothing and warm boots down to them. Though the clothes got stuck in the trees, the cosmonauts gathered up the boots and returned to the ship. There would be no rescue that night, and they needed to prepare themselves. The descent had caused rising body temperatures in both men, and the sweat chilled them. Leonov had it worse, as deflating his suit to return to the ship had caused his body temperature to spike rapidly. He described feeling sweat sloshing to his knees in his suit. Both men stripped and wrung moisture out of their clothes and spacesuits. They separated the soft inner lining from the more rigid outer layer of the suit and settled in for a rough night as temperatures plummeted to negative 30 degrees Celsius or negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. With no way to cover the opening where the hatch had been, it was a long, cold night the men were lucky to get through. The sound of an airplane overhead woke them in, and they shot a signal flare into the sky. Soon, a group of rescuers on skis found them. The group included local guides, doctors, another cosmonaut, and a cameraman to film their exciting rescue. The thick woods tempered the excitement of the rescue, though, as a helicopter still couldn't land and the men would need to spend another night in the woods. It was a much nicer night than the first, however, as the rescuers chopped down trees to build a quick shelter and a big fire. The starving men were fed a hearty dinner before settling in for another cold night. The next morning, the cosmonauts and the rescue party skied 9 kilometers or 5.6 miles to a clearing where the helicopter could land. From there, they were taken to their launch site at Baikonur for a warm welcome from fellow cosmonauts with hugs and laughter before being taken to the city of Leninsk at the head of a kilometers long motorcade. It may not have gone smoothly, but it was still another first for both the Soviet Union and the world, and they returned as heroes. Just two months later, on June 3, 1965, astronaut Edward White became the first American to walk in space. Just four years later, on July 20, 1969, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong became the first people to walk on the surface of the moon.
Leonov went on to participate in the first joint mission between the Soviet Union and the United States in July 1975. The joint effort signified improving relations between the two countries and an end to the Cold War and the space race.